Hi everyone, it's Honesty from Temporary Tourist and today I'm going to show you how I do my post-process editing on my night photography and this applies to even daytime photography but I'm going to focus on night photography right now um, from shots that I've taken in the theme parks. So just to give you an idea of what we're going to cover I haven't touched these two, but this one, this is the before, and I'm going to show you how to do the after. Go from a before to an after, from a before to an after, a before, after, and the last one. So we're going to go over how to accomplish those techniques or those looks with these techniques. So first we've got a picture of the uh, Yacht and Beach Club from looking at it from the side of the boardwalk. So I always drag and create another um, original background. That way I've always got an original copy. Next, I notice that it's off tilt just a little. So I'm gonna come over here and I am going to grab my ruler tool. I'm going to actually blow this up just a bit so I make sure that I've got a good straight line. And I'm gonna base it on the line here. So we're going to go with right about there. I'm going to go ahead and click straighten. And at this point, um, Photoshop is doing its thing. And it's straightening the image. So it's going to rotate it, then it's going to crop it so that that, um, that line is going perfectly horizontal. And I'll actually redo this in just a second so you can see what it did. So I'm going to minimize the image back out. So now my image is perfectly straight, but this is what it looked like before. It was just off by just a little. See the white edges? So that's how much it ended up rotating it a little to the right. So, all right, so now that my image is straight, I am going to go up here. I always select my little pointer tool. I'm going to go to Image. I'm going to go to Adjustments. And I'm going to go down here to Shadows and Highlights. Now, just defaulting at shadows at 35%, you can see the brightness that it gives the photo. I am not somebody who enjoys that look. So I will bring this actually all the way back down. And I'm going to come over here to my highlights first. And I want to look at what my highlights do. So putting it at 100%, there's the before, there's the after. Now I brought some definition into where it was overlit with the street lights and it brought out a lot of the definition in the balconies and in the windows. I'm going to show you again. But I don't know that I'm going to do it at 100. I'll probably bring it down to about 60. Yes, I like that. Now I'll go up to my shadows and see, oh, just moving this up a bit, I can get a completely different look where it's got the stylized look. I don't like doing that to my photos. So I'm thinking, I usually am a 10 to 25, and I think I like 15, so I'm going to stop there. So now I have gone from this to this. Just a slight modification, but it kind of cleans it up. Next, I'm going to go back up to Image, Adjustments, and I'm going to pick Hue and Saturation. Now, I'm going to go over here to Saturation, and I, again, kind of stick in the 20 range. Let me show you. At 100, it is way too red. And I would say even in the 20, it's still a little too red to me before after just a little too red to me so I'm gonna actually bring that down to 15 okay 
Now, there are other things you can play with here, and they're fun to do with Epcot shots, but for me, I consider this photo done. Now, I have a Photoshop action that I will run next on here that will um, sharpen the image, and it's an overlay of the high-pass filter. I'm just going to do it manually so you can see. So I will take my image that I've just edited, create another copy of it, go up here to filter, click on high pass, and that's what it looks like if you just leave it at normal. And it's cool, but it's not what we want. So we're going to go over here to normal, and I'm going to go over to overlay. And for me, that's too harsh. It defines all of the lines, and I'm actually going to, I'll blow this up so you can see it a little bit better. But looking at the rooms here, without the filter, with the filter. It's a little too harsh for my liking, so I'm going to actually probably bring that down to about 50. Let's minimize this a little and see what that does. And I think that's good. So now, I'm, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this just for the sake of showing you. I'm going to merge my layers. Okay, so this is our edited photo, the before and the after. Same thing. Now with this one, there's extra little spots in here that I do not want in my photo. So I'm gonna make a copy of it. I'm gonna come over here and using my spot healing brush tool, and that's big enough, I'm going to remove the little imperfections that I don't want showing up in my photo. I think we got them all. Okay, so just to show you, just removing those out. Now I'm going to come up here, adjustments, shadows, highlights. It defaults to the 35. Again, I'm going to bring it all the way down. Bring this all the way up. And that it's really making the boat stand out, and I like that. So now I'm going to look at my shadows highlights. I'll probably do about a 10. Okay. Now I'm going to go image adjustments, hue and saturation. I'm just going to look at a little bit of color. And I think this one I may actually go to a 25 on. I like that it picks up the red in the umbrella and that it's picking up the lights off of the balconies. And I love the light over here on the, um, on the lighthouse. Okay, that's done. Now this is where I'm gonna do my high pass filter. Um, for me, I have a shortcut on my keyboard where I just can hit a couple buttons and it does it, but I will do it manually. So I make a copy of my background layer, I go to filter, high pass, and now it's bringing it up. All of this that you see are going to be the areas that it's really going to sharpen for me. As you can see, when I go to hit overlay, it's going to be pretty harsh. Just to give you an idea, before the filter, with the filter. One of the areas you can really see how this filter works, if you take a look in the wood of the boat, individual planks, I'm going to turn it off and on. You can see the grain. Okay, I'm going to bring that down, I think, to probably about a 75, nope, down to about a 50, I think that's why I'm going to be happy. Yeah, 
I like that. So I'm going to merge these. And now I'm going to show you oops, before and after. And I've already done those techniques on these shots. So at Epcot, as you can see, all the little movement of the stars for long exposure to after. Dumbo the Flying Elephant. And this wasn't a really long exposure shot. This was just a quick shot that needed some touch up. Uh, a moving shot, again, of Dumbo. and Epcot. Now I'm actually going to show you something. When you're taking pictures of the Epcot ball, as you can see there's little lights and colors that automatically come on the ball. I'm going to go over to my spot healing brush tool. As you can see this is way too small to fix this and because I prefer to work fast I'm going to go for a bigger And we're going to wait for it to fix it. Again, this is the healing brush or the spot healing brush tool. And that should give us what we want. It does. Okay. Image adjustments, shadow and highlights. I'm going to take the highlight down. So if I go all the way, I'm getting these colors kind of popping up on the ball more. So I'm going to go all the way when I'm using um, this tool when I'm doing Spaceship Earth. I'm going to hit OK. Actually, I see one spot I want to remove. Is it still working? I'm going to fix that. That may be too big. No, oh, got it. Okay image adjustments now hue and saturation now with the ball the more saturation you give the more colors you're going to get I am actually going to probably take this to 30 now I don't play with hue very often but whenever I'm working with spaceship earth I always think it's kind of fun to watch the ball change colors and it would be perfect for making a gif because of all the different looks that you can get just by playing with the hue settings when it comes to Spaceship Earth. And depending on what angle you get Spaceship Earth out of, if it's a direct on shot when you first enter Epcot, um, at night you can get some really great color shots. And that's the one that I did. Let's see if I can find it for you. Sorry, I have to, I shouldn't be going through all my photos with you, but now I am. So there you go. Okay, I will have to dig a little further because the one I'm looking for, no, I have to dig further, but um, all right, these are all done. I'm going to hit OK. I'll just go back to this one. And this one, same thing, same techniques. So now what I would do is I would add my watermark to each, um, each photo file. And then I run a script, the image processor. And it's doing its thing. And I can tell it to run my, my watermark on these because I have my watermark set up as a Photoshop action. So default actions, temporary tourist watermark. I've got my copyright info in there. Um, I'm going to select the folder that I want it to save in. And I'm going to hit run.
and now it is condensing each file and saving it for me so I don't have to go in and individually save them after my edits. That's actually adding my watermark and then saving them. Okay, now it has saved all of my images. Come over here. And we can see that each image has the watermark on it. This one I need to go in and adjust because it's not a right side. But there we go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will be more than happy to uh, try to help.